There are a number of important concepts in today's lecture. Uh, we're going to be learning JavaScript, but importantly, we're going to be learning about arrays. We're also going to be learning about random numbers, which we'll use to, to generate an individual element from that array. Now, we're going to begin this lottery.html file just as we're taking a generic template and naming it that. You'll see that we have a link to our style sheet. We also have a script in the head. That's going to be where we're going to put our functions, potentially. And a script down below in the body. That's where we're going to execute those functions. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable called candy bar, which is a new array. And that's going to allow us to to create multiple elements. Now, the way an array works, if you've never used one, an array contains a series of elements, all with the same name, but uh, differentiated by a number, the subscript. So, for instance, the Beatles, uh, we all know John, Paul, George, and Ringo, Beatle number one, two, three, and four, or the presidents, Washington, through Lincoln, I'm sure you have those memorized. Now, candy bar sub zero is going to be the first element. Some arrays begin with element one. Some arrays begin with element zero. You have to check uh, specific languages to figure that out. But we began with the three musketeers.jpg. That's the first candy bar we have listed. And we've actually got about 13 candy bars. So that's from zero to 12. The 100 grand, the almonds, the butterfingers, and so on. So now we have an array. Instead of calling 10, uh, 12, 13 different candy bars, we now have candy bar is the array from zero to 12. And we can also create a variable called i, which is candy bar dot length. That means the candy bar array, which we've already defined as an array, and it says dot length, it says how many elements are there. So although we're numbered from 0 to 12, i will have a value of 13 in this example. Now, below the link and before the JavaScript that I do have, you'll notice I've just inserted another script, but instead of script to slash script like I did before, I've added a little attribute, source equals functions.js. And in this case, there is no script between slash script and slash script because it says call the source function. We can have multiple source functions called. In this case, I'm going to begin with a random number function. And you'll notice I put an i as the parameter. That's because we're going, to, we're going to need the, the, to generate a random number. It could be from 1 to 10. It could be from 1 to 100, or, or in this case, 1 to 13. Now, it begins with a variable called num. <clears throat> and I want you to take a look at that. Actually, math.random, that part of it, math.random will generate a number from 0 to 1. When you multiply it times i, you, in effect, get from 0 to i whatever that is. So if i is 13, we'll have a number valued anywhere between 0 and 1. But then you notice math.round parentheses separating that. So what that will do is round these numbers, which actually means we will have an integer from 0 to 13 in this example for, for num. Now, I only have in the array 0 to 12, so I don't really want number 13. So if num double equals, that's the comparison equals, if num equals i, then we know that it's the number 13. In that case, we're just going to reassign it a value of 0. Uh, because, in fact, the way it breaks up, everybody wouldn't have had an equal shot. 0 and 13 each have only had a half a shot at it. So uh, by doing this, we, we make it so 0 to 12 all have equal chances of happening. And this function is going to then return a value of num. So num is going to be generated between 0 and 12, and then it returns that value. So that's what this function random number does. Okay, so back on our main program, let's take a look closely at the body. And in that script there, I'm going to create a variable called a, and it's going to be equal to random number sub i. We already know what i is. i is the length of the array, and the array happens to be 13. In length. So it's going to generate a random number from 0 to 12 in this case. And we'll do the same thing for numbers B and C. Now this is important because then I want to create a variable, I'm going to call it PHA as in photo A, equals get photo, and I've got two parameters, 
candy, the word candy, and candy bar sub A. That's how that's pronounced, candy bar bracket A bracket, which we know to be some sort of a image, actually, is what we know it to be, because A is a random number from 0 to 12, so candy bar sub A must be one of those in the array, one of those elements. But we didn't create a get photo function, so now we have to create that. And again, what we see here is uh, candy happens to have been the folder, and image name happens to be candy bar sub A. And I'm going to create a variable called pH. And it's going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to an image string, uh, string with the source equal to dot dot slash images, whatever the folder is, and then whatever the image name is. But this is important. To make it look right, I've actually got pH equal to a string that begins with double quotes and ends with double quotes. Then we have a plus sign. And then whatever I sent for the folder, we know it's going to be candy. And then a slash key in quotes. And then another plus sign. And then the image name. So whatever we put, which was candy bar sub A. And then we close that quote. That, that quote at the end is actually tied to the source equals single quote. Now at the end we have a closing of that single quote and a greater than symbol. We already know the single quotes, if you need them to be within strings, you have to have double quotes on the outside, single quotes on the inside. And I'm going to take and return pH. So that's actually just whatever the, that's the HTML code to display an image. That's all that is. So now, back to my body where I've got my three variables and I create a variable called pHA. And while I'm at it, I'll create a pHB and a pHC. Those are all the photos of A, B, and C. So A, B, and C are numbers. And PHA, PHB, and PHC, those are the corresponding candies in the array based on those numbers. And then I create a table called, I'm sorry, a function called display table. And in it, you'll notice I have four parameters, four arguments, the number three. And then I have PHA, PHB, and PHC. Well, we haven't created that table, so I'm going to go back to my uh, functions.js. I'm going to create another table, uh, another function, display table. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is a document.write. And again, in quotes, I put table border equals, but I have to specify what it is. Well, whatever B is. So table border equals closes my, my quotes, and then plus sign, and then the B, and then a plus sign. And then what do I need still? I need the greater than symbol. That line, we'll just write out table border equals 3. And, of course, in the bottom we have a, a document.write slash table in the less than greater than symbol. So that's how my table is going to begin and end. But what's, what do we got in between? Well, I've got a row. And, again, I can't just write tr and slash tr because I am in the middle of writing JavaScript. And JavaScript needs to write out the HTML with a document.write statement. And inside of that, I'm going to have three cells, or what we call table data, TDs. Document.write, and in parentheses, TD, and then the plus sign, and then item one, and then the plus sign, and then slash TD. Do that for all three of them. And what that's going to do is that's going to display in a nice little table with a border that in this case happens to be three, three items. But what are those items? Those are those images, PHA and PHB and PHC. So we're going to just display that. Now, while we're at it, I'm going to go back up into my script. I want to create a function called winner with A, B, and C. Explain how that's going to work. We, we know the candy bar names, but just as easily could just work with the numbers, A, B, and C. If you get a match, you're a winner. If you... Well, let's begin with this. Variable answer equals you lost, try again. So I'm going to make the assumption at the beginning that you're actually a loser. I mean that you lost in the lottery. <laughs> so from there, I'm also going to say document.write br and then the ans variable and then br. So that's just going to separate with a blank line whatever my answer is. But in between, I'm going to ask this conditional. Well, if a double equals b, in other words, comparison equals. 
of a equals b, what do we know? Well, not too much yet, but let's add the or. That's the two pipelines. You know where the pipeline is. It's probably above your enter key and below your backspace key, somewhere around there on a the keyboard. But this says if a is equal to b, if it compares to b, or if b compares to c, what do we know? We know that u have at least one of those two. Two of those are a match. But the possibility is that a equals b, or b equals c, or a equals c. And either way, my answer now, I created a variable called you lost try again, but now I'm going to reassign that a value of winner, winner, chicken dinner in the event two of them match. But what if all three of them match? Well, there I'm going to have, if a equals b, ampersand, ampersand, the double ampersand means and b equal equal c. So b, if a compares to b and b compares to c, then we know you're a grand prize winner. And you notice I have to have my parentheses. The if statement requires parentheses, but within the parentheses we need a equal to b and b equal to c to both have parentheses. So at that point we don't really know what the answer is going to be. It starts out saying you lost, try again, but then it might have switched to winner, winner, chicken dinner, and even still it might have switched to grand prize winner. Either way, it's going to be the right answer. After displaying the table, we'll just display winner of A, B, and C, in which case it will print one of three possible phrases. As you can see here, um, I, first time through, Raisinets, Symphony, Three Musketeers, so I'm a loser. I get nothing. But let me go back, because I'm much too lazy to keep refreshing the screen, so I'm going to go back to a meta tag called HTTP-EQUIV, an HTTP equivalent. And it's equal to the word refresh. Contents is equal to, content equals the word three, or the number three. What that says is every three seconds I want to refresh this page. So once you put that meta tag in, you can get a page to refresh. Now, normally you get a news page that might refresh every 10 minutes to see whether or not there's an update on that. But this is every three seconds because I'm too lazy. I want to I see a winner, a winner-winner chicken.